back again. Uh, my last video um, showed you um, uh, the making of a uh, a ball on a stainless steel shaft, uh, and that is uh, going to be the beginning of a. Uh, a swivel adapter that I'm making for this dial indicator so that I can use it on the milling machine with my adjustable sliding attachment. Um, so um, I'm at the stage where I've got a piece of half inch shafting it's not stainless, it's mild steel. I decided to go with mild steel because uh, I only have one tap, a 5.16 uh, 32 thread, um, which I believe is uh, uh, one of the threads that I used uh, alongside with the ME40 thread. Um, I think... Uh, that a lot of the plans um, request a, a 32 thread and uh, so I happen to have one and that's what the thread on this dial indicator is a 5.16.32 so I was in luck um, it's a bottoming tap so I've tapped it uh, so far down and this is going to be the beginning of the nut that is going to go like this. Where are we? Just like one of these. It's going to, it's going to eventually look like that. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm endeavouring to do. Um, okay, so uh, one of the things that I do, unfortunately this tap, it didn't have a centre in the end, so I couldn't tap the material uh, with a live centre in the tailstock, so I had to do it by hand, and um, as you can see, um, it was running out, it wasn't very true. So what I do, one of the things that I, I've done in the past is when making adapters for the 3 quarter 16 threads on, on here, that's the first thing I do is get the material that I require and I drill a hole and I tap it with a, a, a 3 quarter 16 thread a tap and uh, it's a good one, it's ground all over and it runs very true. So that's what I have done in the past in making back plates or face plates or anything. Um, I put the uh, I put the um, uh, the three quarter uh, sixteen tap in the chuck, and I thread the plate on, and then I machine from there, locking the plate on the thread uh, so that it doesn't move. And I found that it comes out pretty true when you place it back on the uh, on the spindle and the only important part is the thread and the recess uh, that is uh, like a register that keeps the chuck running true and the face so once you've got that done then you can screw it on the spindle I mean uh, I'm sure you all know that you all realize that um, but this is uh, uh, another instance where I really want to um, get the outside running uh, truer than it is on this thread. So what I'm going to do is um, I've uh, I put the I put the, the tap and the the part in the collet, and without the tailstock um, supporting it, I I drill a centre. Uh, so it's a free centre, and um, uh, and then of course I use a, 
a revolving centre and uh, for support and, and machine this this part and hopefully it will come out pretty within reason uh, pretty true uh, certainly better than than it is at the moment so I'm just going to take a few skins on it now now um, I don't want the tap to break uh, because I'm taking too too big a cut so I, the cuts are going to be light um, and hopefully it won't break the tap but it will chew up the outside so that's what I'm going to do now I've got the machine running at uh, well just over 1100 and nice thing about this is that I can I can wind that right the way under and I don't have to chew, start moving this tool bit over to this side because the the original tailstock of Taig is is uh, is stopping this carriage from moving far enough back. So that's one of the reasons why I actually um, uh, built this this unit. Uh, that was the that was the whole idea of it. So um, we'll see how it goes. I haven't used it a lot um, since I've made it. I've used it several times, but let's hope that everything goes fair, goes well. Um, I don't want to take too much off, but I want to clean it up all the way along so that it's it's round and not oval or eccentric, should I say? So as you can see, the tap is running pretty nice and uh, accurate. So hopefully this uh, will do the trick. This, you know, I mean, this is just trivia really. Uh, something that I do um, and uh, other people will have different ways of doing it. Um, but this might help somebody someday if they if they get into that situation where it's really important that the piece run true on the thread, then this might do the trick for them. Um, it's just ordinary mild steel. Um, I just thought that stainless trying to tap with a plug tap. This is a plug tap or number three, whichever you want, and uh, um, I, I just didn't want to break the tap, uh, it's the only tap I have, I bought it oh, probably 40, 50 years ago, so uh, that's another, th that's just another thing that I, I'd like to mention, um, everybody seems to think that in the modeling uh, fraternity um, or well I shouldn't say in the modeling fraternity but there's nothing wrong with carbon taps you know they're sharp they're probably sharper than high speed um, let's face it if you're into modeling of steam engines life steam uh, any kind of thing that involves uh, model engineering uh, size threads there's nothing wrong with a carbon tap how many times in your lifetime are you going to use that particular tap you know I mean if you're in industry then that's a different kettle of fish but but for the hobbyist there's nothing wrong with buying carbon taps if you can get them anymore I mean I know that high speed taps are relatively cheap but um, carbon are even cheaper, but uh, don't, don't, I, I don't think you should get carried away that um, because they use everything in industry, that's what you you have to put up with. You you don't have to. I mean, um, so it's just one of my pet peeves, I guess. Uh, I have no problem buying uh, carbon taps. Uh, 
nothing at all. So that's just a little bit of trivia from me. Probably doesn't mean anything, but um, it's worth thinking about if you're if you're tight for money. Uh, it seems that a lot of hobbyists are, are tight for money. It's not a cheap hobby, but it's a lifelong hobby, and if you can afford it, then get the good stuff. But to me, if you can buy carbon, and that's all you can afford, then nothing wrong with carbon whatsoever. It's not so strong, maybe, but uh, certainly do the job. So. Sometimes the old ways are, are still as good. I could put this on a on a faster feed, but oh, that's another thing. Um, just this is all just trivia. Uh, you don't have to take any notice of it. But um, if you're buying O-rings, um, I'll show you in a minute. Um, I don't know where this one came from for the feed. I've got an O-ring on the feed, uh, and it's an O-ring that's very thin or small in diameter, and um, they're so robust that I think it's going to last a really, really long time. Um, I'll just show you. There, just a little O-ring, um, well it's not a little one, but um, that's what I use, I happen to have it spare, I mean that's one lucky thing about it, I didn't have to go searching on the internet for it, but um, if you come across any O-rings of that size, that's, uh, let's see, let's see. This one, just for technical information, this one is about three inch diameter. About three inch diameter. Maybe three, yeah, about three inch. So, and the, the section is, is uh, 70, 75 thou. So that's what I use, and they stretch, and they're nice. Oh, there's nothing wrong with elastic band either. Okay, what I'm going to do now is it looks like oh, it's not all cleaned up. Tenth hour cut. should do it. Of course I don't know how parallel it is. Maybe my center's not quite right. Could be. Let's we'll see. It really doesn't matter because I'm only going to use the first or well, probably three eighths 
and that's the extent of of it. Um, okay, well, wind that off, wind that back, undo that. Let's see. Well, it's running pretty true. Well, that's good. So, let's see. Where's my micrometer? Here's another bit of trivia for you. That is, let's see, 20, 24. That's 50, 56 years old, that micrometer, and it's been used in industry. I've used it all through the tour room, my tour room years. Um, never been adjusted still perfect so I know you can you can be unlucky if you buy off the eBay but if you can get it cheap enough and it's good that's all you want it's just an old more and right English old more and right I got another one locked away that I use on special occasions, a Tessa Digit. Um, uh, it's a Swiss one, and um, I keep that for real special. It's got little cubes with numbers in the cubes, and as, as you revolve it, the cubes turn around and count from zero to a hundred. And uh, it's an inspection, one inch mic. But um, but you can get some, I mean, not everybody mangles their, um, their micrometers and, and uses them as, uh, as wrenches for tightening up nuts. But, you know, it, if it's cheap enough, it's worth the chance. And you could get yourself a nice mic that's a quality mic and not one of these Chinese things, you know. Although there's probably nothing wrong with them either. Uh, but it's just been used by somebody else. That's, that's one of the things that we worry about. We don't know who the person was and how they treated them. But uh, well that reads, at that end, that reads 478. And this end... Reads about two tenths more. About two tenths. So, there you go. Um, that's the beginning of the nut. And uh, what I'll probably do now is to, um, I might set it up in the, in the uh, dividing head and drill down at 90 degrees the holes I'll, I'll just do two holes go right the way through and that should give me um, this nut that should give me that nut and there will be the holes there and hopefully I'll place them in the right position so that uh, when the ball is locked up on the indicator, uh, the uh, it'll drop down into the slots if if I need it. I'll I'll probably never need that. The, the whole idea of this is that I sometimes when you're finding a hole, the stylus is not right on the center line of the um, of the quill, uh, and and you need to. Just move the indicator over slightly so that the stylus is, is coming down on the point where you want it. Like if you're dialing in a hole or dialing in a peg, uh, you want the stylus uh, c close to the center of uh, uh, the cross section. And, and with the setup that I had that came with that, I could only move it in one direction and I need to be able to move it in four directions so that's basically 
all I need this for. Um, but once I've got it, it'll stay like that. It'll stay in the holder and um, it'll be ready whenever I need it. So, Okay, I'm going to call off now. I don't think I can say any more. I've got to knurl this outside. That's probably what I'll do next is to knurl the outside. I'll probably put a straight knurl in because I have... Uh, I have this uh, this nice little knurling tool that I built from uh, plans of, uh, of um, Hemingways in, in England and uh, I scaled it down and uh, I've got two sets of, uh, of wheels. I've got a straight knurl and I've got a uh, diamond knurl. So uh, that's another little tool that I built that that uh, scales down to the size of the tag, um, which is not oversized. And that works really nice as well. You've got a cam here so that you can put one knurling on the shaft and instead of unwinding this and to put in another knurl further down the shaft, you just, you just pull this lever and that lifts the jaws apart enough to slide over and then when you push this back up on the cam you get the same depth on both knurls so that's another nice little feature and it's very solid as well there's no wobbling of the uh, of the jaws they they stay in line and uh, um, worthwhile. it's a worthwhile project you know um, you can you can go out and you can buy these simple little things that they start wobbling around sideways as, as soon as you put a cut on or, or go along and they're, they're too flimsy. This is nice and solid. Um, it's a nice fit. There's no flop in the, in the jaws but they, uh, they do move up and down nicely. So that's another little project um, that was worthwhile. Anyway, I'll call off now and uh, I hope you enjoy the video and I hope you don't think that I'm a, a big mouth and uh, I just like helping people. If I can, I get some enjoyment out of it. Um, I get a certain satisfaction, the same as any, anybody else uh, when somebody looks at my stuff. So anyway, thank you and enjoy.